Hello, and welcome to episode 13 of Summer Knits, a podcast about knitting and yarn, all fibery fun goodness. Occasionally, there might be some crochet because I do that as well, but um, primarily my main addiction is knitting, and I am here to share it with you. Today, I am somewhat sacrificing the light, which I have pretty good light coming from this way for the Christmas tree just because this is probably the only podcast I'll get filmed while it's up. Um, my kids will be out of school for a couple of weeks and it will just be a lot harder to have any quiet time to myself. Speaking of quiet time, it is quite windy outside today and um, the dogs seem to be panting quite loudly. So hopefully that's not coming across too badly on the video, but just in case you hear some noise, um, we are having some crazy weather here. It is almost 80 degrees Fahrenheit again today, which is not normal for the middle of December, and we are potentially expecting thunderstorms, but the wind is what's really raging right now. I could do without it. But let's move on to the knitting, because hopefully that's why you're here. I have my first finished object right here. Um, the yarn is kind of busy, so it's hard to see, but it is a ranunculus. This is my Christmas sweater for myself, my Christmas ranunculus. If you've been here before, you might remember it from um, the last couple of episodes, but it is a merino silk. It's 50% merino, 50% silk um, blend, and it is hand dyed by Southern Skeins. And this was the December Not Sock Box last year and um, the yarn was so Christmassy that I put it away and after I made my first ranunculus over the summer I was thinking about what could I do with two skeins of that merino silk because it was such a nice feeling but it was so very Christmassy. Um, so it's, it's like pastel Christmas. There are lots of flecks of light green in with the various shades of the red that fades to pink. Um, Anyway, so I decided I wanted to do a Christmas ranunculus, and of course I intended to get it done much sooner and be able to wear it all month, but that's okay. Um, I got distracted by so many things, as I am prone to do. I went for the tighter neckline. I probably could have blocked it less aggressively and kept it even tighter, um, but I feel like it sits in a good place for me. And the I went for the, the longer sleeves, and I did do the diagonal cuff. And I actually do like the diagonal cuff. I think it's really neat the way that it's been written in the pattern. I did block the sleeves um, kind of aggressively to make sure that they were the length I wanted. And I did block the yoke open to open up all the pretty lace work because you get the, the gorgeous um, flower motif and all of the textured stitches across the yoke. And then I did go much longer. In fact, I ended up asking the dyer if she had any leftover skeins. And she had two that were slightly off, so she had kept them. And I used them and used helical knitting to blend them together. So it fades from the darker, darker red and green at the top to a slightly lighter version at the bottom where a few other flecks of colors are introduced. And I'll stand up and show you in just a minute. I went quite a bit longer on the body than your standard ranunculus. I figured I would get a lot more wear out of it if I did that. I love the look of the crop sweaters, but I don't wear them as often as one I can just throw on with jeans or leggings or anything and not have to think about it too much. Um, and then I did longer ribbing, um, only by a couple of centimeters. I think it calls for eight centimeters of ribbing, and I think I did ten um, I did do a sewn bind off. Um, I went for the tubular bind off because I think it makes such a gorgeous edge and it looks nice with the cast on. And then, um, the sleeves are an I cord so that you didn't have to do anything except graph them together, um, where the I cord ended. And I think that that was it. Overall, I think I ended up using three three skeins worth because I think I have about half of each of the the two additional that I ordered left maybe a little bit less but um it is a DK weight I didn't hold any mohair or anything with it I just straight up went for the merino silk and it is so soft against the skin like so perfect and I could probably wear this every day 
this month and be totally happy with it. In fact, I might find myself wearing it not at Christmas time because the feel of it is so perfect. And I did try this on over and over while I was working on it to check length and everything. It's hard when the yoke is still bunched up because you don't get a really accurate picture of where the yoke is going to hit um, until you open it up with blocking. But having done the ranunculus before, I had a pretty good idea of where it was going to land on me and what I was going for. I did go down one needle size from what is recommended in the pattern and um, that worked really well for this DK weight yarn. I wanted it to not be super boxy. Um, I didn't want it to add any bulk to my body. I wanted it to kind of skim most places. So I'm going to stand up. It might look a little awkward, but um, I'm going to stand up and show you the length and the bottom ribbing and the overall fit of my Christmas ranunculus. So I'm kind of out of frame if I stand all the way up, but I can squat down. So you can see it falls at um, the lower part of my hips and the ribbing is about 10 centimeters, just a bit longer than called for. It is um, skimming without hugging at the hips. So there's some positive ease through the chest and body, but skims right along there. The sleeves have a little bit of positive ease in them. I didn't want them to be tight, but they're not baggy either. They just skim along and there's a bit extra fabric here, which is what I wanted to give it that little balloon look before the cuff comes in. So overall, very happy with my Christmas ranunculus. And like I said, very happy with the yarn. It's so soft and silky. And I really hope that she does this merino silk base again for the Not Sock Box because that is a, um, a monthly surprise subscription that is anything except sock yarn. So she varies the bases quite a bit. There's been alpaca blends um, and all manner of things. In fact, I have the most recent month to show you once we get to acquisitions. Um, and I was so excited when I opened this package, like I might have squealed. It's beautiful. I can't wait to show you. But um, we're going to move on to other finished objects because I'm going to try and keep it brief today. Um, I know with Vlogmas going on, there is so much to watch. So I'm going to try and keep it on the shorter end of things if I can contain myself a little bit. I do have a tea um, to sip on, which it was too hot before the podcast. But um, the last time that I took my kids on the Polar Express when they were really little, we got these pretty hot chocolate mugs, but they're the perfect size for a nice cup of tea. All right, my next finished object is my husband's Christmas present. This is a Musselboro hat, and um, I used Temptation hand painted or Tempted hand painted yarn. And I don't know if she's still around or not, but mm, eating fiber, delicious. Um, but I got it years ago and had always intended to make something for my husband. And I thought I was going to do socks, but I ended up doing, I cast them on. I didn't like it. I pulled it back out again. Um, ended up doing the muscle burr hat. And I love how the yarn has ended up making a swirl when you look at it from a distance. Up close, you don't notice it as much. But like you can see on camera from a distance, it kind of swirls. And then the reverse side is all black. Um, and I did make it, I did the adult large. I did make it so that he could, and it's not blocked yet, so it's going to grow a little bit. So like, bear with me here. But I did make it so that it would fold up and be thicker over his ears. Um, so you end up with four times thickness over the ears, which is awesome when it's super cold outside. But the way our weather's been, I'm just not sure if it's ever going to get super cold outside. But anyway, I like the look here where the top is black and just the folded brim has his school colors. Um, this is his alma mater's colors, so orange and black um, were the colors of the college he graduated from. So then on the, on the really busy side, you can put just the black near the face and kind of tone down what's right near the face. Or I'm just doing all kinds of fun things to my hair right now. Um, you know, you can wear it just slouchy and don't fold it at all. Um, so it's the adult large. 
and I was super nervous that it was going to be way too big, but um, I actually think it's quite perfect, especially once it's folded. And we'll see how it, I mean, I don't think it's going to grow super much when it's blocked. Just kind of soften up a little bit and get a little bit of additional length because his head's a bit bigger than mine. So that way, when he does fold it back, um, it's the perfect length on him. I hope that he likes it. Um, I had a lot of fun making it, and now I really want to make one for myself. And I've kind of been considering that speckled yarn that I got in the Christmas swap that I did um, with a friend I found through the Knitting Traditions board on Ravelry looking for a swap partner. Um, actually, I think I have that yarn out here. It just happens to be in this pile. Um, so this was the holiday yarn that she sent me, um, and it is Hedgerow Yarns, and the color is Little Christmas Tree, but it's got so many speckles in it, so many colors, that it doesn't necessarily look Christmassy. Um, and I thought that might make a really nice Musselboro hat. So, I don't know. Maybe... And I don't know if I would just do the whole thing with this or if I would switch it midway like I did with that. I'm kind of inclined to just do the whole thing so that I get the speckles with the folded brim either direction. But I don't know. I'm going to think about it. Anyway, that would be a way after Christmas thing because there are so many other things still going on. Um, the next finished object that I want to talk about. Oh, the black in the hat was nitpick stroll. And it just took... It took almost one 50 gram skein to do that half of the adult large. So I used about half of the skein of the tempted hand painted yarn. And now I want to use the other half to do some socks for him or something. And that way I can do like use the really busy yarn as maybe the cuffs, heels and toes, and then do black through the leg and foot. I don't know, something to think about or get a solid orange and do that. We'll see. So this is my next finished object. Um, Brogan of Wooly Witchcraft had put out a tester call for her biscuit tin socks and I couldn't resist a good DK weight sock because I love making socks. I love the feeling of finishing a pair of socks, but I tend to be pretty slow at making the standard sock weight socks. Um, I know a lot of people can just power through them and get a ton done. Um, Jonathan Days. I'm so impressed with Jonathan's sock collection. But um, this DK weight sock was so fast. I did the shortbread sock. This is a collection of three socks. Um, and I have it on my Knitting Left Sock Witch sock blockers. I think that they are so cute. Um, anyway, the shortbread sock, I did the small size. And that is the other thing. So many sock patterns, even the adult small, is too big for my foot. Um, and I don't feel like my foot is that small. I wear a U.S. women's six to six and a half, depending on the shoe. Um, anyway, this gave such a perfect fit. And yes, I know you can go to the length you want, but a lot of times it's the width on the sock patterns. They end up baggy around my foot. Um but I don't necessarily want to make all ribbed socks for myself. Like I, I, I want cute socks. Anyway, so I did the adult small and I did the shortbread sock. There are three patterns, shortbread, gingerbread, and I forget the other one, but it comes as a set of three and they have been released. Um, so they're out now. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link below. But um, I used a mini skein from last year's advent calendar. My husband had got me the Madeline Tosh 12 Days of Christmas advent calendar. So there was this um, brownie gold coppery color. I was trying to see if I could get the light to hit it better. Um, and then this yarn and this one were from a sock set from Crystal Skies Hand Dyed and it was a Harry Potter theme that I got back in 2000. Um, and so I think it was pumpkin juice and I forget the name of the green. Um, but 
I had put these three together in a previous podcast talking about working on socks for my sister or my mom or somebody, I, I forget now. Anyway, I ended up choosing different colors and then um, these kind of sat there together and I still wanted to use them together in a sock because I just think that this, I don't know, whatever you call it, um, coppery color went really well with the pumpkin juice and the bright green. And I actually meant to switch to the bright green for the toe also, but I got so excited about being done that I totally spaced and didn't do it. So I'll just do the same thing for the other sock. I haven't done the second sock yet, but I'll just go ahead and do the just the heel differently. And anyway, I held fingering weight double for all of it, but these are written as a DK weight sock pattern, um, but she wanted testers that would do both, some testers to use just a DK weight and other testers to use fingering weight held double. So these are my shortbread socks from the Biscuit Tin Sock Collection by Wooly Witchcraft. Check her out. And if you're not a subscriber to her podcast, she is so lovely. And I just love her podcast. Um, she just, I don't know, she captivates me the whole time. And, and I really enjoy watching her. So if you're not familiar with her, please go give her podcast a watch. Um, the next finished object hasn't been blocked, and I know I showed it almost finished previously, and yes, I'm going to put it on and mess my hair up again, but that's all right. Um, I have not trimmed the ends because I don't trim ends until after I've blocked. I like the yarn to really settle, but I did what I talked about and sewed down more of around the face instead of just tacking it in one place like the pattern calls for. And then I so I aggressively pinched and sewed down the fox ears. Um, there's so much to this cowl, but my sister-in-law lives in Colorado where it is much colder than it is here. So, and she has a ton more hair than I do. So I think that's gonna poof it out a little bit more and really support those ears. What I can't decide, and feel free to give me your feedback, is if I want to do the pattern calls for two decorative buttons right here at the bottom of the face opening. Um, and in the pattern, they're just, they're wooden buttons, but, and I don't have any wooden buttons, but I could go get some and that wouldn't be hard. Or I have black buttons and I could just put black buttons there um, or I could just like skip the buttons all together and go with it like it is. I think I might reinforce this ear a little bit. Um, but also I'm going to block this so that the yarn gets a wee bit softer. Um, it is Lion Brand Thick and Quick. Um, I think that might be what the pattern calls for. I'm pretty sure it's what the pattern calls for. Anyway, it's really warm. It's getting hot. Um, it's a really warm hood and I hope she likes it because she is obsessed with foxes. I'm apparently obsessed with eating little bits of fiber. Um, anyway, it's just kind of her fun gift. I also got her other things, but so this is the Phelan Fox cowl or hood by Heidi May and I'll link that below. I try and link all the patterns that I talk about down below. Um, and it's the second time I've made it. I made one for my daughter. And back then I didn't really gauge swatch. And so it's much looser. This time I went down a needle size from what the pattern calls for because I'm a super loose knitter. And that seems to have actually gotten me gauged this time, which is good. Um, so my daughter's hood is way loose, um, even though it's a child size. And then this is the adult small maybe um and and it is much more fitted but you can like pull it down over the shoulders and it's super warm so i think it will be enjoyed both for its whimsy and because it is useful um my next almost completely finished object i've showed it before i showed it last time basically finished but 
my dad's sweater I have now woven in the ends for all I don't know what it was 12 16 there were a lot of balls of yarn in this sweater and I have now woven in all the ends so as soon as I am done filming this guy is taking a bath because it is such a thick yarn I think it's gonna take days to dry like I think this sweater dried in a day, but I gave it two on the mats just in case, in case the second layer was still wet underneath and I couldn't tell. Um, but I think this is going to take multiple days to dry. And um, I have my blocking mats in a room where I can shut the door and turn the fan on high to keep the air moving. So that might help, but um, I want to be able to wrap it in time for Christmas and... I'm just afraid it's going to take a long time to dry. So blocking as soon as we're done here. I'm very excited about having that done. If you've been here before, you know that sweater was many years in the making. Um, and I was super nervous about even trying to finish it just because of the yarn and the fit and everything else. Interruption due to phone call from my mother, but just in case she needed something important, I felt like I should take that call. Um, so next up is a hoe. I guess my test knit for Brogan was a hoe, but, um, I have a half finished object. Um, so I've talked about needing to do these for a while and I finally got started on my son's rainbow socks. So this is the Regia Perfect Rainbow and I haven't blocked them yet. So the toe still looks like super pointy. Um, anyway, Regia Perfect Rainbow. I think it's a, <clears throat> sorry, a six color rainbow. Anyway, um, so I made him that hat. Oh, my voice. Goodness. Excuse me. I made him that Stephen West hat um, earlier in the fall, the Wind's Chief hat, I think it was called. Anyway, he keeps asking where his socks are because um, he wanted a hat and socks from that ball of yarn and there was plenty of yardage because he's only six. So here are his socks and they may be a wee bit long but I had my husband actually measure his foot um, while I was working on these. I was on a girls weekend with my daughter who is gonna turn 10 shortly um, and we had a wonderful time. But I had my husband measure my son's foot so that I could get pretty close but I also didn't want him to outgrow them like tomorrow. Um, I do still need to block them and I've just gotten a start on the second one. But this one went so quickly that I feel like when I can actually focus on it, this one's going to fly also. Um, I used the Thickmas sock pattern, um, Thickmas Vanilla Socks by Summer Lee. She had just published another set of thick and quick socks um, recently that I had purchased because it had some cute designs and I'm really loving DK weight socks right now. Um, and so I had her Thanksgiving socks that I bought last year and this year she came out with Thickmas. So the vanilla sock actually has child sizes. I think the cabled sock in the pattern does not. I think it's only adult sizes. But I think the vanilla went all the way down to baby. Anyway, I used that as a guide. I did 10 rows of 2 by one ribbing for the cuff. And then it was just vanilla knitting with a slip stitch heel. And so I'm going to do the same thing on the second one. And I'm not worrying, obviously, about lining up the rainbows because he wouldn't care. I mean, sometimes he takes one sock from one pair and one sock from another pair and wears those. Um, so he doesn't care if the rainbow lines up. So I think they're going to be super cute and I think he's going to be excited and I am wanting to get them done and actually wrap them up so that he can open them on Christmas Day because I think that he will really enjoy that and feel special. Um, I've talked about needing to do a hat for my daughter so that is also on the agenda hopefully for this week. The other thing on the agenda is to really focus on finishing that firefly sweater for my son. Um, if you recall, I put the body on hold and am working on the sleeves. 
it does look to me like maybe it's coming out a little big um, but I'd rather big than small because he'll grow into it eventually um, so I need to get the sleeves done go back and finish off the body I really don't think it's that much knitting left on the sweater um, it just needs to be focused on because I've been working on so many other Christmas things um, and just needing to get things finished. I finally, I feel like I can see the light at the end of the Giftmas tunnel. Um, so hat for my daughter, finish the Thickmas socks for my son, finish the Firefly sweater. Those are the main things. I'm still putting time in on my elf mail. Um, I have not put any more time in on the Straya cardigan. Um, I'll get to those things eventually, but really the focus is getting everything done, blocked, and wrapped for Christmas. I have to figure out how to get my husband's hat blocked without him seeing it. Hopefully I can put it in my craft room, close the doors, and he'll stay out of there and not see it. But that's also the access to the attic, so maybe I'll throw a box in front of it or something so that it is not fully visible from the doorway. So next up is acquisitions because I don't have any other new cast-ons other than the Thickmas socks. I do have quite a few acquisitions. Um, just timing wise, that is how it has worked out for the podcast. Um, since I filmed on December 1st, I had not started opening my advent calendar from the Creative Knitter yet. So I have that. I have 15 days worth of advent calendar and I have loved every day. It is the Brights advent calendar and I really think that I might want to make some kind of rainbow jumper or something with all these bright minis. I know that's a lot of ends to weave in but something. It's, I mean, they're beautiful. So I had um, let's see. Day one was Berry Crush. I'm going to try and do them kind of quickly so you're not here all day. Day two was Pinky Swear. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen some pictures of these. This is Pretty in Pink. Um, if anyone else got this advent calendar and doesn't want to see the colors, you should definitely look away. Um... I might end up getting them out of order. This one is raspberry because I didn't put them in order before I started. Lipstick red. Um, I think next was coral. Tomato. Pumpkin. Orange Pop, um, Ducky, like I said, some of these might end up out of order. Sweet Corn, Sunshine, Grasshopper, um, Sour Apple, and and then there was also, I'm not sure what I've done with it, there was also in um, yesterday, so day 14, there was a wintergreen chapstick by the Creative Knitter also in the calendar. And so that was fun. That was the first day that there's been like an extra in there. I also, usually my husband does um, an advent calendar for me and I do one for the kids and I think that I talked about doing his beer advent calendar on my last episode. Um, so this year has been kind of random and it's not every day, but he's been leaving yarn like on my pillow and stuff instead of like a countdown to open every day. So I'm not sure how many minis there will be in the end or if there's anything else at all. Um, I'm going to grab the minis. All right. So... I don't know the dyer. 
they don't have names. Hopefully, at the end of it all, like he tells me where they came from, um, because they're clearly hand dyed minis, and they are both variegated and speckled. Um, so I think the very first one was this blue. So it's got like a mid blue, an ice blue, and some really dark green speckles in it. Um, and then the next night I think was this purple and it's a beautiful purple with also dark green speckles in it. Um, and then the next night was this blue and it looks similar on the screen, but in person, the speckles are deep shades of navy, not the green of the other one. And then it's got this more turquoisey aqua light blue on one side. Um, and then let's see, there's this green and yellow with green speckles. That's really pretty. Um, and then this pink and purple and blue that is totally me. And it has both blue and purple speckles in it. And then this is like a cream, pink and purple with like magenta or fuchsia speckles in it. So, so far there are six minis. I don't know how many there will be in total. I don't have a plan for them yet. Um, I have always wanted, well, always, um, I wanted to do a habitation throw, um, and these are definitely colors that I love. And I have, I have a whole basket of minis that I could do that with. And so that is one thought. The other thought is to use them as heels and toes because they're so pretty and they could go with some nice solids for some pretty socks. So I just don't know. They feel really nice in the hand. I'm assuming because they're fairly close in size to the ones from the Creative Knitter that they are 20 gram mini skeins. So I'm assuming that they are 80 yards ish. All assumptions because <laughs> there is no information, but they're pretty and a man who gives you yarn or a significant other or a best friend or a parent, anyone who gives you yarn uh, is a keeper. So. I have one more thing. It came this week. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen the unboxing, but last Christmas, my brother and his wife gave me a gift certificate, gift certificate to Fiber for the People yarn, and it took me forever to decide um, what I wanted, but I ended up ordering two sweater quantities, and no, the gift certificate didn't cover all that. I had to add to it, but that doesn't matter. Um, I ended up ordering two sweater quantities because I couldn't like decide. So I just, I just did two. One of them is for the um, even fall. I think that's the name. The Andrea Mowry pattern. It's even fall or even tide. Even fall, I think. Um, it calls for merino singles. So my main color is butter. And it is just a really pretty butter yellow. Um, my first contrasting color is Bada. And it is this like mid-tone blue. Let's see if I can get a really uh, pretty good color. Um, so these are, oh, it says Superwash Merino Single Ply. I'll have to double check because um, I thought I ordered the organic merino single, but sorry, we'll see. Um, and then moon is my other contrasting color and it is like a really pale neutral gray. So together, these fellas will be that sweater and um, I don't want to cast it on until I finish my elf mail because it's gonna be another one of carrying multiple yarns together and I feel like I should finish one 
before I start the next one. But I think it's going to be really pretty. It's going to be different from any of the other sweaters I've made color-wise, but still fit, I think, seamlessly into my color palette, my wardrobe. Um, the next set, the next sweater, is either going to be the Chloe sweater or another striped sweater. I love the fit of the stripes by Andrea Mowry. Um, if I do a striped sweater, I'm trying to decide if I would... What, what draws me to the Chloe sweater is that the stripes are not all the same width. The fit doesn't necessarily draw me. So I'm considering doing the stripes pattern because I know it fits me well, but using some of the row counts for the stripe widths from the Chloe. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. They both call for sport weight yarn, and I have really wanted to try the um, merino hemp that Fiber for the People had, and she started a Chloe with it, actually, and ended up ripping it out, and she's doing a Stripes now, which is kind of funny. Um, but I picked some jewel tones knowing that the hemp doesn't take the dye like the wool does. And so I would get this halo effect from the hemp that would tone down the jewel tones. So the, and then I, I got one neutral also. So I got fleece is my neutral. Um, it is kind of a, a neutral taupe. I don't know if you can see it very well, just cause of the light. Um, oh, well that helps. It's a neutral taupe. And then I got Teal Me Away, which is a like vibrant, beautiful teal color. And then Winter, which is this more steely blue. And Compote, which is a darker blue that leans purple. I would not call it a full-on purple. I would call it like a purple-leaning dark blue. I mean, almost grape, but not quite enough red for me to call it purple. I don't know. Other people might think it is. And then, um, oh yeah, Bougainvillea. I couldn't read it. Uh, Bougainvillea was just this beautiful, deep pink. So... These five colors together are going to be either another striped sweater or a Chloe. So let me know what you think. Um, if you've knit either pattern or if you've looked at both patterns, I'm wondering if the square neckline on the Chloe would, I think it's square. It's much more angular than the circular yoke of the stripes. Um, if it would suit me or not, or if I should just Stick with the stripes for the construction and vary the width of the stripes. I wonder if that would work. Anyway, so very exciting because I ordered these, it feels like forever ago. I really don't think it was that long, but it was definitely before all the Christmas started exploding everywhere, before all the Black Friday sales, before all the things. Um, so I'm very excited. I love the feel of the merino hemp um and i know that hemp softens even more with wear but i really i like the feel in my hands i think it's going to be nice to work with so i am very excited about all of my new yarny yarns um the other thing i had mentioned it earlier was i got my december not sock or no my november not sock box from southern skeins and I was so excited when I opened it because blue is my favorite color um, and aqua leaning blues even more so. And this is called Blue Christmas and it is so vibrant and so beautiful. It is a um, worsted weight, 100% superwash merino, 100 grams is 218 yards. So I have... Um, you know, not quite 
450 yards to decide what to do with, but boom, so pretty. I don't know. I think it could be super squishy, gorgeous mittens. It could be a really pretty hat. Like, I don't know. Can't decide, but it's so pretty. It needs to be something because it's just gorgeous. And it came with, sorry for the crinkling. I forgot to open this ahead of time for you. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Um, it came with some wool wash and a spice chai. I love chai. And an adorable little stocking cap stitch marker. There's, or progress keeper. There's always a progress keeper with each yarn box, whether you get the sock box or the not sock box. I try not to look at any previews because I like to be completely surprised when I open the boxes. Um, so to the point where I have had to like hide her on Instagram so that I don't end up with any spoilers because I don't want to know. Also, there's always a free pattern. Um, this time it is a um, crocheted mitten pattern for the worsted. And the, the free pattern is generally supposed to use just one skein because it comes with even just the, the one skein box. I always do the add a skein for the knot sock box just because since it's thicker yarn, I like to have enough yardage to do a reasonable pattern. But the free pattern is generally supposed to only use one skein of the yarn from that box. And then the sock box, if you ever ordered that one, comes with um, a pattern specific to the sock yarn. And I think I read that it is all actually socks for 2022. None of the patterns will be for other types of accessories in the sock box. It's gonna be, I think that I read that she's going to do a full year of sock patterns. So if you get the yarn, you get a free pattern to go with it. And um, I think that's it. So thanks for sticking with me. Um, I don't know if this ended up coming out any shorter or not, um, but I have enjoyed getting to spend a little bit of time with you because I think, I really think it's going to be mid well not mid january like hopefully the first or second week of january i can film again and i'll just take pictures of any christmas knits that are given that i don't get a chance to show i'm considering whether i should bust out the bear cowl by heidi may for my brother to go along with the fox for his wife i have the yarn um so we'll see if I get the time, if I finish everything else and like, I mean, all the other gift stuff, then maybe I'll do that. But um, I will take photos of anything that I don't get to share. And then who knows, maybe I'll have some serious acquisitions from Christmas to share next time. We'll see. I know I have a seasonally appropriate project bag that's out for delivery today. And I thought about waiting for it to film, but... I didn't want to chance not getting done and getting posted. The other thing that I have to do today, since this is one of my last days at home without the kids and my husband for Christmas break, um, is I need to wrap gifts, like sort the kids' gifts and get them wrapped and get my husband's gifts wrapped because he keeps working from home on days that I'm off work. And that does not help me get the presents wrapped. So, um, yeah. I also have not finished all my Christmas cards. I have started. I think that I have mailed something to everyone who has filled out my Google form so far. If you would like a Christmas card from me, absolutely nothing is required in return except to comment below about holiday traditions, your favorite holiday traditions or winter traditions. Or this time, because I am planning my January knitting a bit. Um, if you'd like to tell me your favorite first or beginner color work pattern, um, that would be fabulous also because I'm really, I'm going to bite the bullet and try it. Um, 
Rebecca of the Crayabea podcast. She's having a knitting first knit along, um, or I can't remember if that's what it's called. I'll put the details below. But anyway, it's about trying new things. And that's something that I keep meaning to try and really want to do, but haven't done yet. So I don't know. I think small scale project is probably best to start with, like a hat or something. But let me know what you think. And also, um, there was something else I was going to ask. And now I'm at a total loss. I do not remember what it was. But let me know where you are with your Christmas gift knitting. If you're doing that, um, or if you're totally done and you're just relaxing. The other thing I'm curious about, I mentioned this on the last podcast or the one before about learning about the Christmas Eve cast on. Uh, are you casting on something on Christmas Eve? And if so, what is it? Because it seems like a lot of people do socks. And so I'm just curious if that's what everybody does or if you do something different. Um, I don't know that I will do anything except drop into bed exhaustedly on Christmas Eve because we have so many family things that happen during the day that day. Um, if not, though, maybe I'll do a Christmas Eve cast on. If I do, it's probably going to be like DK weight socks or something that I can do quickly and easily. A lot of times, at least before kids and, and sometimes since, the day after Christmas is when I do a selfish cast on. Like, I'll do all that gift knitting and a lot of times be doing last minute things. And then the day after Christmas, I make something for me. So um, a lot of years I cast on a new hat for myself or something the day after Christmas, or I used to wear and make a lot of cowls and now I don't anymore because I feel like um, they're just very bulky on me and I wear them for the 10 seconds to walk into my office and then I take them off and I don't put them back on until the 10 seconds to walk out of my office. So I, I haven't made any cowls for myself in quite a while. But if you're going to do the Christmas Eve cast on, I'm really curious. Um, let me know. And I'm going to wrap this up because I really do want to keep it short and not intimidating while people are in the middle of all the vlogmas. I know that uploading on December 1st was probably not super strategic on my part. Um, views and comments are definitely down a bit. And I figure part of that is so much vlogmas, like I can't even keep up with it. It's overwhelming the number of people that I want to watch and I just, I don't have enough time to get through all of them. But thank you for spending a bit of time with me and I'm excited to hear what you're working on. I will pop that Google form down below again, Christmas cards to anywhere in the world. And some people have been getting some random packages of surprises as well. Um, in addition to the Christmas cards, so you just never know, I've been using a random number generator when I do that and then just posting them off. Um, I have another post office trip coming up today and I'll make another one next week. So feel free to fill out the form and maybe you'll get a surprise in the mail. But you'll definitely at least get a Christmas card because it's nice to get mail that isn't bills. And... If you want to send me a Christmas card, you are welcome to. I love getting Christmas cards or winter cards or New Year's cards or a random letter in the mail. That's, it brings me joy. So I like to send out joy into the world. Thanks for stopping by. And I can't wait to spend some more time with you when we get through the holiday crush. Ugh, that sounded terrible. I can't wait to spend more time with you when I get through the holiday crush. I hope that you are having a wonderful day and take care.